Ladies and gents, this is the card that you've been waiting for. <laughs> Welcome to the Freak Show. I was recently doing some graphics card hunting to replace my son's GTX 950, as it isn't really up to the task when it comes to modern games. While looking around on eBay, I found some RTX 3060M cards listed at £155. What the hell are you? Out of idle curiosity, I googled 3060M and ran across a bunch of 2022 articles about these cards, all from July 21st for some reason. It seems that at some time during the crypto boom and GPU drought, some cunning Chinese manufacturers got their hands on laptop RTX 3060 chips and built them into regular PCIe cards. This was to circumvent Nvidia clamping down on cards being used for crypto mining as the mobile chips didn't have the limiter used in the desktop cards. There were a couple of videos on YouTube where some had been bought and tested, and the conclusion seems that they would be great if only it wasn't for the drivers having to be downloaded from the AliExpress seller's download links. Another search brought me to a Reddit post by Arutar, who, having bought one of these cards, got fed up with the supply drivers being rubbish for gaming and started modifying the official ones for support. They are behind a subscription wall, but with entry level being only $1.05 or 83 pence per month, it's totally worth it when you factor in the energy cost savings from using this card. As it looks like modified drivers are updated almost immediately, I made an offer on one of these cards for £147.50, which was accepted. Then I knocked another £7.50 off using vouchers. A few days later, it arrived. I was actually quite surprised that it had a vaguely legitimate looking box and wasn't just plain brown cardboard. I looked online for Jing Pai and oddly enough found very little. Enough talk! Sorry. Of course I had to test it before giving it to my son. So that's what I did. The only system not doing anything in my room was one I intercepted from a neighbour who was taking it to the tip. Apparently it didn't work, but for me it fired straight up. It isn't anything special. A 10-year-old Asus H81M Plus with an equally long in the tooth i5-4430, a single stick of 1600 MHz Mushkin DDR3 and a 450 watt power supply which gives a high-pitched scream when turned on. So essentially, a worst case scenario PC. A fresh install of Windows onto an SSD later and it was time to do updates, install games and then finally install the drivers. Keeping an eye on the device manager during installation amused me when it installed and was then referred to as the Frankenstein driver. Let's see what scores it produced in 3D Mark. On the scrap PC, Firestrike gets 13,143 points and is apparently legendary, which I assume to be a good thing. Following that is Time Spy, where again the setup is legendary. And we get 6,511 points. As it's an RTX card, it makes sense to test ray tracing, so I ran Port Royal. Another legendary score of 5,163. Having run hardware info in the background, I was very happy to see that it had peaked at a mere 60.9 degrees and used a maximum of only 77 watts of power. Moving on to Heaven, which can be quite a taxing benchmark, it comes out with an average FPS of 196, which is pretty amazing at only 77 watts and considering the machine spec. Next, I replaced the memory in the system with 16 gigabytes of 1600 MHz Roy Mai, as I figured the CPU would struggle in games. It's actually rebranded Hynix RAM I got from Amazon for £20. Time for game benchmarking. First up is Tomb Raider with everything set to 1080 high settings across the board. It flies through, aided by the now dual channel 16 gigs of RAM, and ends with an average of 80 FPS and is only 1% GPU bound. Not a surprise with this quad-core 3 GHz CPU. Next is Cyberpunk 2077, where I thought I'd try my luck with high settings and DLSS set to quality.
It takes more of a hit than in Tomb Raider, but comes out with an average FPS just shy of 60. Rounding up I tried Borderlands 3 at high settings and a resolution scale of 150% to give the card more to do. This is making it fully max out, but as you can see it doesn't top 60 degrees, and the power only pops over 80 watts once. There are some frame time stutters here and there, but this is likely down to a combination of only having 6GB of memory on this card, and the CPU struggling to shunt data through. It finishes with an average of 56 frames per second. I also took Fortnite for a spin, or I was going to, but after a game update on the second day of testing this kept popping up. Seems the easy anti-cheat had detected a funky driver file. Then I remembered that during the driver install there was an option to enable EAC support, so I selected it, and after reinstalling, Fortnite gave no further trouble. I tested at DirectX 11 and 12, both set to high with DLSS on quality and both performed about the same as far as FPS go, getting figures in the 40s and 50s, although averages were higher in DirectX 11. On reviewing the footage to add it into this video though, what struck me more than anything was that the card only topped out at about 29 watts in DirectX 11 mode. But can it run Crisis Remastered at the Can It Run Crisis setting? Surely that is the test of a gaming PC. Well, yes. Yes it can. At 1080 with DLSS set to performance and everything else cranked as high as it goes, this mutant hybrid PC plays fine between lows of 35 and highs in the 70s, held back purely by the CPU again, while the 3060M uses up to about 75% of its potential. Cyberpunk gameplay is pretty much the same. With its high settings and quality mode DLSS, the CPU is the only thing holding it back. The 3060 is jogging along with one eye open, barely hitting 60 watts of power draw. So what do I think of this thing? It's built well enough to keep temps from rising above 60 degrees no matter what happens. The power draw is ridiculously low. It has enough connectors to power four displays, although I'll be honest and say I only tried one HDMI. Who cares that it's a hacked together monster? Who cares that it only has 6 gigabytes of memory? I think it's amazing that this card can turn a decade old office PC into one that'll play cyberpunk with acceptable frame rates at high settings. I love it! The crying shame here is that this card is evidence that Nvidia could make high performance ultra efficient super low powered consumption cards if they wanted to, but that won't make them any money. In a system with pretty much any CPU from the last five years, this card would shine, and it's just a shame I couldn't find a system with better spec to test it properly. The regular 3060 runs at 170 watts maximum, so more than double what this card pulls. With electricity prices as they are, a low powered GPU with this performance would be perfect for anyone gaming for several hours a day, and it'll pay for itself through the savings on your electricity bill. Unfortunately, after buying this card, the seller must have thought there was consumer interest and has more than doubled the price to £355, so I count myself super lucky snagging one for £140. Right, well I guess I'll get back to doing things with older computer parts now, and um, I will see you in the next one. Bye!